Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dragon.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the latest Elixir ROM based on Android 13 on 12 Pixel 6a. After that, we'll show you how to root this ROM and finally, we'll show you how to pass the safety net test on the rooted Elixir ROM. So with that said, please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, we have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction in eDrive as you could see. You could extract them to any location on your PC. Once that is done, you now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. So go to the settings menu on your phone and from settings menu go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. This will enable developer option. Now go to system. You should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get the prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. And you might not get one more prompt regarding RSC key fingerprint. So tap on allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. So let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to platform tool folder, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will run the command form window inside platform tool folder directory as you could see. So now type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. Let me show you that as well. So as you could see, I am getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide. I have also made a video. So go refer to my guide or the video and you have to unlock the bootloader. In short, you have to boot your phone to fastboot mode and once it's there in the fastboot mode, open CMD window and type in fastboot flashing unlock. You will now get the prompt on your phone. Use the volume key to bring up unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. Your phone will undergo a reset and with this it will either go to the fast boot mode or the OS and your phone's bootloader will be unlocked. Once the bootloader is unlocked, the easiest way of verifying the same is referring to the OEM unlocking section. As you could see, it's been shown as the bootloader is already unlocked. You can also verify the same from the fast boot mode as well. In the fast boot mode, it should be showing as device is unlocked. So this signifies that the bootloader is now unlocked and you could now proceed ahead with the next step. So next step you now have to download the ROM. So go to the its website and check out the ROM version first and foremost. As you could see, it's the latest May update. So on your phone as well, you should be having the latest firmware build which corresponds to the ROM version. Since the ROM is of the May version, May build, so we'll also have to flash the ROM. In other words, our phone should also be having the May firmware. So to verify the same, go to your phone about phone section and then have a look at the build number. So as you could see, it's the May build. So the ROM date on which it was uploaded as well as the ROM date and build number should correspond to the same firmware which is currently installed on your phone. If that's well and good, then please download the ROM from here. And once you have done the download, you will also have to download the vendor boot.img file. This will act as the custom recovery for our phone. So make sure to download the ROM and the vendor boot. Once you have downloaded both this file, simply transfer them onto the platform tool folder on your PC. So as you could see, this is the ROM file and this is the vendor board. So with this, we now have both this file onto our PC inside the platform tool folder. So let's now move ahead to the next step. So you now have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode. So let's do that as well. So open CMD window inside platform tool folder and now type in ADB reboot bootloader and your phone will now boot to the fast boot mode in a few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame and our phone should boot in the fast boot mode within a few seconds. So as you could see, it's now in the fast boot mode and the device that is shown is unlocked, which signifies our bootloader is unlocked. So let's now move ahead and first off, we have to flash the vendor boot image file, which will act as the custom recovery. So just copy paste the entire command and make sure that the vendor boot file is named as vendor underscore boot, the extension is dot img and the file should be there inside the platform tool folder on your PC. If that's well and good, then open CMD window inside platform tool folder and just copy this command and hit enter. And with this, the vendor boot file will now be flashed onto our phone. Once that is done, let's now reboot our phone to the recovery mode. 
for that you could also use the volume keys to bring up the recovery option and press the power key to confirm or just type in fast boot reboot recovery and hit enter and your phone should not boot to the AOSP recovery so let's just wait for the time frame and it will not boot to the Alexa recovery which is based on the AOSP so the first boot up could take a few additional seconds that's completely normal so let's just wait for the time frame and as you could see we are now in the Excel, we are now in the Alexa ROM recovery. So with this, you now have to sideload the ROM and do a factory reset. So first, you have to do a, the ROM sideload. For that, select Apply Update and now choose Apply from ADB. With this, our phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. So let's verify the sideload connection. So open CMD inside platform code folder and type in ADB devices and make sure you are getting a sideload keyword. Once you are getting this keyword, we could now sideload the ROM file. So for the ease of convenience, let's rename the file to something shorter. So let's rename the file to just ROM. The complete name will become ROM.zip. So make sure the name of the file is ROM.zip and is there inside the platform code folder. Once that is done, let's now sideload this ROM file. So type in adb sideload ROM.zip and the sideloading will now start. So let me show you. So as you can see, the sideloading has now started. And as of now, it's on step one of two. This is, this is the step which takes most of the time, the maximum amount of time. The step two of two only takes a few seconds. You could keep a track of the flashing from the CMD window as well. So let's just wait for the flashing to complete and then we'll be back. So, guys, as you could see, the flashing is now complete. On our phone, it's showing step two of two. And in the CMD window, we are getting total transfer. So, in the CMD window, the process will only go till 47%. Once it reaches the 47%, the flashing will be complete. So now that we have done the flashing, our next course of action is to do a, a format data. Do keep in mind that this will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure you have taken a backup beforehand. Once that is done, now go back to the recovery and select factory reset and then select format data factory reset and tap on format data. The formatting data will not begin and it will only take a few seconds. As you can see, we have got a data wipe complete message. Once that is done, go back and tap on reboot system now. Our phone should now boot with a newly flashed ROM and do keep in mind that the first boot up might take a few additional seconds. Moreover, since the ROM is bit inbuilt with G apps, so it will now load the Google app packages and framework. So loading those Google apps plus the first time boot up of any custom ROM takes a few minutes extra, rather a few seconds extra. So let's just wait for a ROM to boot up and then we will show you the UI of the ROM as well. So as you could see, it's the boot animation of the ROM. And since it's loading for the first time, you might have to wait a few additional seconds. Once it's get booted up, we will then show you the UI and UX of the ROM and some of the unique features of this ROM as well. So let's wait for the time frame for it to boot up. And then we'll proceed ahead and then we will prove the ROM as well. And after that, we'll pass the safety net test as well. All I will be showing in the same video itself. So let's just wait for it to boot up and it will only take a few more seconds. And from the subsequent boot up, it will not take that much longer. It's just for the initial boot up time. So don't interact with your phone as of now. Just leave it in this state. In rare cases, it might take up to five minutes. That's also not a cause of any concern. But generally, the phone boots up in a couple of minutes. But in rare cases, you might witness an additional couple of minutes delay that's not an issue and with this we are now in the OS so as of now I will be skipping the initial setup screen and I'll take you to the OS if you want please you could restore the backup right now itself but I will not do a restore now I will do a re restore later on I'll simply skip the initial setup so if you're currently connected to a internet then the boot up will take a few additional seconds to load up the Google Terms and services and the app data backup restore page. So, generally, it's recommended to be offline if you don't want to restore the data. So, let me set the phone offline itself and let me skip the initial setup screen. If you want, please take a re restore right now, or you may also take a restore after booting to the OS. Both the things will work. Anyways, with this, we are now inside the Alexa ROM as you could see from here. And this is the setex menu. Let me take you there. And as you could see, the UI is completely revamped of this ROM. It's different from all the other AOSP ROM, all the 
pixel sock UI and it's the essence section which beholds the USB of this ROM. So you, these are the themes as you could see from here. Then we have the lock screen art, quite a few lock screen arts. After that is the status bar tweaks. And then we have the quick setting toggles as well. Then is the gestures from here. And finally, we have the some miscellaneous tweaks as well from here. So with this, we have now flashed the Alexa ROM onto our phone. And let's now proceed ahead with the next step to root this ROM via magic, and then we'll pass the step in the test as well. So let's now proceed ahead to root our phone. Just a minute. So from here, first and foremost, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. So we have already done that. You, if you haven't done so, then refer to my guide and install the tools from here and extract them onto your PC. You would extract them anywhere you want. Once that is done, you now have to enable USB debugging. So let's not do that right away. So go to the settings menu on your phone, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Now go back, then go to system and now you, you should see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get an RSA key fingerprint prompt. So tap on allow and with this debugging is now enabled. So let's now verify the debugging connection as well. So go to platform code folder, open CMD window and type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug it from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging and carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting the ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to download the latest Magis APK file. At the time of recording the video, the latest version is 26.1. So you could go to my guide and go to the content section and from here, download the version 26.1. It's the APK file. You could download from here or refer to the official change log on the GitHub page. And you could also download the APK file from here as well. In fact, the link which I have given is the official link from the GitHub page as well as you could verify from here. So download the APK file and now you have to place the APK file in two places. The first one is inside the platform tool folder and the second one is on your phone. So let's now place the APK file inside both these places. So inside the platform tool folder, paste the APK file. So just a minute, let me re refresh it once. Okay, so it's my phone storage. So just give me a minute. I'll now copy the file. Magis APK file and place it inside the platform tool folder. Likewise, you also have to place one APK file of Magis onto your phone. If your phone is not visible on your PC, then that's not an issue. Simply expand the notification section, go to Android system, then expand charging this device and choose file transfer. And now your phone should be visible here. And now let's transfer the file onto our phone. In fact, I'll be transferring all the required files onto my phone at one go itself. So let me do that. Just a minute. And we are not transferring the Magis APK file. So just to repeat, the APK file should be on your phone as well as inside the platform code folder. Now the Magis APK which is inside the platform code folder should be changed to a zip file. So right click on the APK file, select rename, then remove the APK from the end and change it to dot zip and hit enter. You will now get the prompt, hit the yes button. So with this, the Magis inside the platform code folder should be changed to a zip file, whereas the Magis which is on your phone should remain in the APK format itself. So with this, we have now got the magic, and let's now move ahead to the next step. So just a minute. So we have got the magic file, and now you have to boot your phone to the recovery mode. So let's now do so. Open CMD window inside platform tool folder, and now type in ADB reboot recovery. So type in ADB reboot recovery, and hit enter, and your phone should now boot to the USB recovery or the Alexa recovery and it will only take a few seconds. So let's just wait for the phone to boot up. In the meantime, I will recommend you to rename the file of Magis to something shorter so that it becomes easier to type in CMD window. So let's just rename it to Magis and the complete name becomes Magis.zip. It will now be easy to type in the CMD window. So make sure you, you do that as well. So with this, as you could see, our phone is now in the ADB side load mode in the AOSP recovery. So now you have to boot your phone to the side load mode. For doing so, select apply update, then choose apply from ADB. And with this, your phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. Let's verify the same. So open CMD window inside 
the home tool folder and now type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure you're getting the side load keyword. Once you're getting the side load keyword, we could now side load the matches zip file. So just to repeat, make sure that the name of the file is magisk. It's in the zip format and it's inside the platform tool folder on your PC. Once you have checked out all these three requirements, let's now side load the magisk zip file. So you have to type in ADB space side load magisk dot zip and hit enter. And the side loading will now begin. And as you could see, it's now started in the CMD window. The progress will get stuck at 34%. It's just a UI bug and nothing to worry about. You could keep a track of the matches flashing onto your phone. As you could see, it will first mount a few partition and system files, and then it will flash the boot IMG file and root your phone. So let's just wait for the time frame. And as you could see, it's currently unpacking the boot image, and it will take around 5 to 10 seconds more. And it's now flashing the new boot IMG file, and the process stands complete. So as you could see in the CMD window, it's showing us total transfer is complete. Likewise, onto our phone, it's showing us done. So now go back and just tap on reboot system now. So your phone should now boot to the OS. But as of now, Magisk has only been flashed in the back end. In the front end, we might not have the Magisk app yet. So we will now have to install the Magisk APK file to interact with the app. And that is the reason why I have told you to transfer the Magisk APK file onto your phone. Because now we'll be installing the Magisk app in the front end so we could interact with the app as well. So let's wait for the phone to boot to the OS and then we'll install the Magisk app onto our phone and proceed ahead with the rest of the steps. So it's now booted. Let's now unlock my phone. And as you could see, we don't have the Magisk app onto our phone. So open the files app and now you have to go to the internal storage or where you, you have placed the uh, Magisk app file onto your phone. So let me go there and now simply I have to install the Magisk app onto my phone. So let me enable the toggle next to allow from this source. And as you could see, we are now getting the update prompt and not the install prompt. We are getting update because Magisk is installed in the back end. We just have to install it in the front end as well. So tap on update and Magisk will now be updated to the latest version. And the entire process will take only a few seconds. Once that is done, let's now verify. And as you could see, we have now got the Magisk app. So let me bring it to the home screen. And now if I launch the Magisk app, I will get a prompt on my phone. As you could see, it requires additional setup. So tap on OK. And Magisk will now install a few dependency and system framework in the backend. And your phone will automatically boot to the OS within 5 seconds. It is now doing a reboot via Magisk. And it will now install the additional requirement in the backend. And once that is done, which takes around 6 to 7 seconds, your phone will automatically reboot to the OS. And then you could proceed ahead. So as of now, let's just wait for the time frame and for the phone to boot to the OS. Do keep in mind that while you are carrying on the routing steps, while you are flashing any file or doing such tasks, the phone might take a few additional seconds to boot up. That's completely normal and nothing to worry about as such. So you should give it a few seconds to boot and then we will check out the result as well. So our phone should now boot to the OS in a few seconds. Let me now unlock my phone and now Let's launch the Magisk app. And as you could see, currently it might ask for one more prompt. So it's again asking for additional setup. And this time it's asking us to do a direct install. So just tap on OK and select direct install from here. If by chance you are not getting the prompt, then just tap on install next to Magisk and then choose direct install. Now tap on let's go and it will now flash the boot IMG file. And once that is done, you will get the prompt on your phone. Now just tap on reboot. And this was the final reboot. Our phone should now restart to the rooted OS. With this, we now have obtained root. So just wait for, a, wait for a phone to boot to the OS. And this time around, we should have obtained root. I'll show you that as well. The process as well as the, we will then verify the process as well. So let's just wait for the time frame and then we will check out the result. The boot up might again take a few additional seconds. That's completely normal and nothing to worry about. So it's a boot animation and we will then move over to our next step once that is done. So let's just wait for the time frame. And so let me now unlock my phone. And now if I launch the Magisk cap, our phone stands rooted. And as you could see, next to the Magisk zip and the Magisk app, we have the latest build now. So guys, with this, we have rooted our phone. To verify the same, you could install an app which is known as Root, root Checker from Play Store. So let me quickly install that app as well and then I will show you the results. So this is the app root checker app. 
let me install the app and now launch it in a matter of few seconds so let's open the app and skip the initial setup screen and now if i tap on verify route you could see we are getting the magisk request so now tap on grant and with this you could verify our phone is now routed by magisk in the magisk app as well if you go to the super user section you could see that the root checker app has been granted magisk prompt so with this we have obtained root but as you might be aware once you have rooted your phone the safety net will be tripped and you might not be able to use banking and payment app so you will now have to pass the safety net test as well but before that let me first show you the status of the safety net test on my phone so for checking the status i will be using the yasnac app you could install the yasnac app from play store so let's now launch the yasnac app and now make sure you are online then tap on run safety net attestation and as of now we will be failing both the test which is the basic integrity and fitness profile match test so as you could see we are now failing both this test so our ultimate aim will be to pass both this test so with that said let's get started first and foremost you have to hide the magic cap onto your phone so let's do that for that launch the magic cap and then go to the settings menu from here tap on hide the magic cap and rename it to something else for the sake of convenience i am renaming it to droidwin you could give it any name of your choice and then tap on okay so with this the magic cap will be hidden let me show you that as well so it will now ask you to add shortcut it's completely optional i don't want a shortcut so i'm tapping on cancel now if we launch as you could see the magic app and the app icon is no longer there instead of that we ha now have the droidwin app it will now act as the magic app in our case so let's launch the magic app and next up you now have to install the systemless host module so let's do that as well so top, tap on the settings icon then tap on systemless host and with this the module is now added so go back go to the module section and as you could see the module is now up and running once that is done you now have to enable zajis onto your phone as well so go to the magis home menu then tap on the settings icon before that as you could see currently is showing no next to zajis so we will now have to change it to yes so tap on the settings icon then enable the toggle next to zajis it will now ask you to restart your phone you will not do a restart now we will do a restart after flashing a module so you will now have to download the settings fix module so download the form here and then place them onto your phone once you have got the module onto your phone go to the module section of magis tap on install from storage and let's now select this module just a minute so select this module and then tap on okay and it will now be flashed onto your phone once the flashing is done just tap on reboot so your phone will now reboot and with this we have got the module and zygis will be enabled as well we'll verify that as well so let's just wait for the phone to boot to the os which might take around 10 to 15 seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll verify the zygis result as well after that only a couple of steps more are remaining and with this and after we do so then we'll be passing the test so let's wait for the phone to boot to the os it will only take a few more seconds so it's the boot animation and our phone should boot in a matter of few seconds so let's now unlock our phone and now launch the magic cap which in our case is now droidwin and first off go to the module section and make sure that the module has been installed and running so as you could see the safety net fix module is up and running likewise next to zygis it should be now showing us yes with this we have enabled zygis and next up you now have to configure the deny list this was earlier known as magic hide so go to the settings menu now enable the toggle next to enforce deny list now tap on configure deny list so now you have to hide the root from the following three apps and the fourth app if it's there on your phone so let's now verify the same so first of let's hide the root from the following three apps for that tap on the overflow icon at the top right and check mark show system apps now first let's search for the play service so select it expand it and make sure to enable the toggle next to all the services likewise do the same for google play store and then we have the google service framework so let me search for the framework app do so as well and the finally is the google play product service it's only there on some rom so let me search if it's there in my so it's not there in, in this form so you could skip this so you only have to hide the root from the following three apps and then you have to hide the root from the banking and payment app of your choice so do so and once that is done you now have to remove the data of all these apps so let's now carry out that task as well so go to settings menu on your phone then you have to go to apps 
and then tap on see all apps then check mark the and then tap on the overflow icon at top right and select show system so let's now remove the data of play service so select google play service go to storage and cache tap on minus space then tap on clear all data and tap on ok next up is the google play store so let's search for the play store app as well go to storage and cache tap on clear storage and tap on delete but this we have removed the data of play store as well then is the service framework so let's search for the framework app go to storage and cache section tap on clear storage and tap on delete after that you have to remove the data of the banking and payment app of your choice once that is done you now have to restart your phone this restart is compulsory okay so you could do a restart from the magisk app as well so let's now restart our phone do keep in mind that you have to restart it's compulsory so after you have removed the data of all these three apps and then the banking and payment app you have to do a restart and upon a restart we should now be passing the test i will show you the result as well and apart from that i also show you one important tweak that i would like to discuss with you so let's just wait for a phone to boot up and then we will move ahead to the final step of this guide moreover i have also linked all these guides on the video description box as well the flashing of the rom the routing the rom and as well as the passing the safety net test all these three guides are there in the description you could refer to this guide and carry out the tweak as and when required so as of now let's now unlock my phone and let me show you one important thing if i now go to the magisk app and now if i tap on the settings icon at the top right and then if i go to the configure deny list as you could see the google service framework is unchecked and the place service is missing from the list both these things are just a ui bug and nothing to worry about in the back end everything is working well and good so even if the service framework is unchecked and place service is missing that's not a cause of concern so with that said let's now launch the yasnak app and make sure you are online and now tap on run safety net adjustation and let's now check out the results so as you could see we are now passing both the basic integrity and safety profile match test so you could now easily use all the banking and payment app on your rooted phone so guys on that note i round out this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and guys please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching